Here's Wilson, and on the right side, but he Rebound loose, wild scramble in front, score! Hello and welcome once again to the Power Play Point Podcast. I am your host, the Blue Liner on Point, and uh, with me is my uh, self-proclaimed hot co-host. Uh, <laughs> let's not lie, she is hot. If you've seen that's, her on Instagram, you that's know what I'm just talking it. about. <laughs> the filters are my friend. The filters, I tell you, because I don't look anything like that in person. It's all and, good. Filters make me look good. And, but yes, I'm here, mm-hmm. I'm in Centerville, and I am on spring break. And that, of course, is the voice of uh, our mermaid mentalist, Anna Knox. Uh, <laughs> Cheers. My co-host since the beginning of this season. Okay, so we're here to talk Caps hockey. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it for this episode of the Triple P. Um, okay, so it's been a bit of a crazy week of hockey. Can I go back for a sec? Sure. I kind of like the Triple P. It's a lot easier to say than than Power Play Point podcast. No, we'll just go. We we'll just we'll just go with it. I mean, we won't say we won't say it all the time, but yeah, uh, that's uh, okay. Yeah, I I can see that. That's it. Okay. All right, go on. That works for all me. Right. All Dallas right. Game. So so right. So let's begin with the game in Dallas uh, last uh, Tuesday. It's a four three win. Okay, so this one went into... Ah, oh, jeez, my app's going crazy on me. Um, okay, so this one looked like it was going to go into overtime until John Carlson gets his right. 15th uh, late in the third with a slapper uh, that uh, puts the game away, and you could kind of feel uh, the air blowing out of the sails of uh, the stars because uh, they were winding up a long road trip. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, the, the, finally, finally, you take advantage of a team that has, uh, you know, expent a lot of energy. So uh, that was a good one, but it was it was kind of getting out of hand at points because, I mean, they, they gave up the first goal and then they... Uh, Jumped out to a 2-1 lead. Then they then the Stars tied it again. Ovechkin got his 44th for the go-ahead. Then Jamie Benn ties it again. So every time it looked like the Caps were going to take the game, they fell back. So that's that's one game. Who oh boy. Then we move on to the Detroit game, which, uh, I don't know about you. News fed. I, yeah, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Just awful to watch. And awful to listen to. I mean, that that was the uh, consensus from any Caps fan. That that I don't know who that guy was that was doing the announcing, but oh my God, was he terrible? Yeah. It was it. It was just a boring game. Just boring. It's it's something that we we should have had. I'm not saying we could go in and annihilate the Wings, but you know what? Hmm. It was not. It wasn't pretty at all. So yeah, the fact that it was a one nothing and it wasn't until the third period that we scored, come on, not good. And as always, a telling stat: uh, thirty nine shots for Detroit, twenty six for the good guys. So mm-hmm. Philip Grubauer earned his shutout. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, got got the shutout the old fashioned way. He earned it, uh, stopping all thirty nine. Um, can't remember if that's his third. I think that's his third or fourth shutout this year. I think it might have been his. Yeah, it might have been his fourth. Yeah, but yeah, awful, awful game to watch. Power play wasn't clicking. Nothing was clicking. But yeah, lucky that um, Connolly got that goal, assisted by uh, Jake Vrana. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, who knows? Uh, but yeah, awful game to watch. And then you have uh, this past Saturday night's game in Montreal where uh, the Caps jumped out to uh, a 6-2 lead, a 6-1 lead at one point, um, after giving up the first goal. 
and then having another goal against them overturned by replay. Right. Uh, um, uh, guess who came back into the lineup and, and scored the equalizer? Genny Kuznetsov with his 22nd. So glad. So glad, yes. And um, on top of that. My boy Tommy. With a pair. Mm. Not quite the pair, and yes. Boy did boy did he come and bring his pair. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Most and definitely. It was about time. And we were talking about that, I think, the last couple of shows. Of, I needed to see him with less penalty minutes, more, you know, at least shots on goals. Just something. But I needed I needed this, and I needed him to get his uh, – Get that mojo back, and and he did with two, and they were great goals too. So it was it was great to see. Yep, yeah, absolutely, absolutely great to see. Uh, the team was, and and it says something when Ovechkin doesn't have to score, and the rest right. the rest of the team is firing all cylinders. But that was good. That was good to see. But the wheels started to come off a little bit towards the end. Uh, they gave up two late goals in the third, and the. The Habs were storming towards the end. They pulled their goalie, and it looked like they might pull it within one, but they just couldn't get it going. So it was a great start, great middle, but kind of an ugly finish. So that kind of segues into the theme of what my concern is for this week, or at least based on these past games, is that uh, while the Caps are getting it done, I, it's it's definitely a case of winning ugly. Uh, so that Mm-mm. I mean, well, it, yeah, it, it, it's a concern, I guess. On on one side of it, well, I we we talked about this before. I, I you you're, uh, I, I can already sense you're you're taking the opposite point. Uh, yeah. But for you, it doesn't matter. Uh, but for me, yeah, it does matter because bad habits tend to carry over in the playoffs. But uh, I know you already disagree. I do disagree. I said this time last week when we were going in that if they could get a win with the Stars, which was which is a tough team to play, by the way. I mean, even even the way the the first period started and you already have Tyler Sagan scoring. All right, don't and they didn't let that set the pace of the game because that kid is just going to keep, you know, keep going. He's damn good. However, we got the win. We kept them. We kept it going. The Detroit game was a total abomination. It was just. It was so freaking boring. But they won, and then they won again. And so I feel like a win is a win is a win on this on at this point. And I don't. You know whether it looks ugly or not. They they did get it done, and they didn't have Kuzi in the beginning of the games, and that's a huge thing. And now he's back and. Thank God, because I didn't think his injury was that bad. I know you and Mrs. Blue Liner were concerned he was going to be out for, you know, a a lot longer. Um, I wasn't as concerned, um, but I think, you know, obviously he came back and scored against the Habs, which was great. But for me, I'm okay with it. You know, they they had Holpe in, and that's probably what we need to talk about, too. It's like he, yes, it was a win against Dallas with him. I still don't see him as a hundred percent. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, like, but like I said, the oh, I mean, you have a point, yes, but I just, I mean, we're we're too close to the playoffs to uh, have have the team still not able to put together any sort of consistent sixty minute effort but see i i okay again i completely disagree because you don't you didn't have kuznetsov in the in the first what the first two games he wasn't there he's a key component to the team and like you just said here we are at the habs game they've got a high score of six points ovechkin's not in that because they didn't need to rely on him that's what i'm talking about that's what they need to do is not have you know bank on all of their um, wins because he's going to score. You know, it's it's we. You're all you know. Yay, T.J. Oshie, and he looks like he's doing great. I still think he's hesitating. Scored in the in the Dallas game and not much in those last two games. Assists, but not 
points, you know, him scoring. So I think that the team is trying to figure out when some of their key players are not 100%, you're Braden Holtby, and you got Gruber, Grubauer in, and he's kicking ass. Um, Travis Boyd, you know, young kid, stepped up, you know, did what he was supposed to do. It wasn't anything phenomenal, but it wasn't a disaster. Tom Wilson, you know, stepped up his game. And there wasn't, you know, Ovechkin scored in the in the last three games. Yes, but not the last one. So we didn't have to rely on him 100%. And that's why I think that it's a good thing. A win's a win. And the team is showing that they don't need to rely 100% on their top players for a win. Okay, well, I get that. But go back to the Detroit game and, and how much of an abomination that was. And I, I don't know... I, I gotta I gotta see the replay again, so I don't know how much luck factored into the goal, but we were kind of lucky that um, Connolly did score when he did score, because otherwise, yeah, like you said, like we both said, uh, Ovechkin, you know, didn't step up and and get one in, but. Like you're saying, next man up. Well, where was that next man? Didn't see them until almost halfway through the third. Okay, uh, all right, so it wasn't luck. They got a two on none. They had to get a two on none to, uh, to, to, to get a goal. So, I mean, all I'm saying is, where was that the previous 40-plus minutes before that? Um, yeah. so, I, I agree. The Detroit game sucks. But I thought that the way they played against the Stars and the way they played against the Habs, they looked good. So, you know, a two out of three, they looked consistent and other and other, you know, people were stepping up. It was great to like I've always I've been since the beginning a big supporter of John Carlson. And he keeps proving exactly my point. He is just a, he's just had an amazing season. And I love to see it. And Connolly had a great, you know, scoring um, ride there in the beginning, went a little dry, and he came back good. You know, it's like the things I want to see, and I, I don't want it just to be all Ovechkin. And I know and, and you're not saying that, but I like to see other names out there because that's the whole point. You're on a team. And yes, they should have stepped up more in that Detroit game, but they still scored, and they still won the game. And then put that one to rest. I want to talk about it. <laughs> I, I, well, okay. I, I, I get all that. But my point that I'm trying to make is I it should not come down to one player bailing them out. If they are indeed going to play as a team, they need to play better as a team. They need to not give up. 39 shots and rely on Grubauer to bail them out. They need to not blow a lead when they have it, uh, like they did against Dallas. They need to not forget that they're playing like they did the last 17 minutes of period three against Montreal. That's the stuff I'm talking about. That's the stuff that concerns me. And all it takes is, uh, to, with apologies to Pink Floyd, a momentary lapse of reason, or re really concentration in the playoffs, Next thing you know, a game you should have won, you've lost. That's my concern. That's my main concern. Okay. And that's, I mean, that, that's why it's, it's these bad habits that keep cropping up that worry me. And, I mean, the, the playoffs are just so condensed. They can turn on a dime that, you know, anything can happen so quickly, as, as we've seen. And... Yeah, that that's really all I'm trying to say is that they they need to weed out these bad habits now. Get into that groove where, uh, okay, so nobody's you're never ever going to be perfect, but you should strive to be as close to perfect as you can, instead of hoping one guy will bail you out. And, right. And uh, not to try and get on your good side, but in in Montreal, <laughs> that that one guy for a while was Tom Wilson. Right. You can get on my good side. It's only <laughs> going to benefit you. <laughs> um, he almost had a hat trick. He was inches uh, away from a hat trick. 
how that's what I want. Like I I hope he ends his season with at least one. I mean, he just looked so damn good and he was everywhere. I want him. And I I, think he's going to keep doing it. I want him to start parking his butt in front of the opposing goalie and just knocking people down and chase that puck down in front of the net. That's what I want to see him do come playoff time. Yeah. We know he's got a shot, but when he puts that big body in front of the opposing goaltender and damned if anybody tries to move him good That's luck right. good luck all right i you know i'm look look at me singing his praises but still that is classic playoff hockey and i think he'll do it i think he'll bring it and i want i, mean, wanna, I, I he, want to see I think, it yeah i think he has proven himself this year that he's not just uh, i mean yes he's up there with the many with the minutes and the penalty box um but you know what i'm okay with it and i think some of the calls were total and you know there seems to be a lot of anti tom wilson out there um but i think he's gonna step it up absolutely and drop the gloves Absolutely. I mean, he he re- refrained from some fights in the last couple of weeks that I was impressed with. And I think he's showing that he's growing up a little bit. But I think he's going to be ready to take somebody on. Uh, who knows? Maybe at the Rangers game. Well, OK, so, yeah. Just because so, he can. What? <laughs> just because because he's Tom. But I know that has something to do with what we were just talking about. But uh, I know I, I, I get that. But but that's just right. He's just one example. And, and to your to your point, yes, he's just one example of several of relying on the one guy. But instead of ri- relying on and, and it's great that he's one of those guys. It, right. That's great. But again, I would rather see the whole team play together uh, all 200 feet of the ice for 60 full minutes. And I'm, I'm not seeing it. And that's yeah, and that's, a, just, yeah, that's a concern. And I just not gonna agree on that. Well, I mean, you you gotta that that's what that's what uh, gets you wins, and as the old saying goes, defense wins championships. And if you don't concentrate on your own end all sixty minutes of the game, you're flirting with disaster, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but. You know, I, I, it's it's nice that we have these guys that can bail them out, but 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 that's not what I'm saying though. I'm I, I'm actually saying the complete opposite of what of of that. What I'm saying is I've this last week we've had um, Kuzi out, and then we had uh, Holpe still not 100% possible injury. Not really sure what's going on there, and the people who we brought up to you know we had to change the lines a little bit or change goaltending a little bit did exactly what they were supposed to do so it's so to me that is being a team that is doing things rather than saying god if we don't have number 92 how you know this whole line's going to be shot we're not going to be able to do it we're probably going to lose because we don't have koozie no he wasn't there they brought in somebody else you know like they're supposed to same thing group hour steps up because hope he's not given 100 percent Oh, she's not anywhere near he was the last year or so, but other people are, are stepping up. So it's not us relying on one or two players to save the game, like the Ovechkins, or relying on Tommy to drop gloves. I feel like they're all stepping up. Unfortunately, yeah, Detroit was not for Detroit. I didn't even, I'll be totally honest, I didn't even sit through the whole game because I think I watched – the first period and was like, this is boring. <laughs> and then came back like in the third period and was like, still zero, zero. Let's go. Like, come on now. But we still won. So I'm, I'm leaving it at that. Okay. I, and I, I get that. I, I agree with most of that, but, <laughs> but again, my problem is at this time of year, you want to, you want to start peaking and you want to okay you i know you cannot stand it or you you look at me all all cockeyed when i when i rhyme but i'm going to make something up here real quick all right Please. the caps should be peaking 
not eking, as in eking out a win. That's what they did those first two games. And they almost, I mean, if you think about it, they almost gave away the Montreal game, too, had they not built up such a big lead. So I say peaking, not eking at this time of year. The playoffs are in two weeks. You need to start playing your best because you're going to start going up against the best. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I'll let your rhyme go. <laughs> you still don't forgive me for uh, uh, muscle to the hustle. No. No, there's been a couple that I'm, yeah, the muscle to the, that was, that was. <laughs> that was a that compliment was... to your boy Tommy, though. It... No. Yes, it was. Oh, I remember you saying it, and I, but I don't see how that is a compliment. To Carol anybody. liked it. Well, so <laughs> I, I did he though? Did he actually say, you know what, Kill? That muscle comment was awesome. No, he might have chuckled. I would say he chuckled because probably he was like, dumb. <laughs> Or done. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, go uh, a- go ask him then. Go ask him. I will. I will personally ask him what is his opinion on uh, quote muscle to the hustle when talking about Tom Wilson. Okay, you do that. Okay, I will, and I'll do it live. Okay. Just well, kidding. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. So I want to point out something else. Uh, and, okay. Um, so this is it's not always uh, the most telling stat, but. You look at the Caps plus minus figures uh, against the Canadians. Um, okay, so uh, some of the good. Uh, Chandler Stevenson plus one. Nick Backstrom plus two. Uh, Burakovsky was a plus three. Uh, he had a decent game, even though I don't really know. I don't think he made it onto the score. Yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. He got two goals and two assists. Uh, he had a hell. No, of, he had a hell of a game. Burakovsky. Um. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. 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 You're right. Uh, two assists. Two assists yeah, and two gonna, points. Yeah. I'm looking at, off there. <laughs> looking at the wrong column, but he still had a pretty good game. He did have a good game. Uh, we haven't talked about him in a week or two. And I, I hope that's previews of coming attractions. But still, he's he's he was the only <clears> one. You figure they built up that great lead. He's the only one that hit plus three. Uh, most of the rest of the team were even. A um, couple of bad marks here. But what about Backstrom? Backstrom, uh, Backstrom, I said, was a plus two. Oh, sorry. I thought I didn't hear you say that. Okay. Yeah, and he got four assists. Yeah, and, that was awesome. Yeah, and uh, and as I mentioned in our uh, Facebook room, uh, I love what Tommy did, but uh, four of a kind always beats a pair. Yes. Yes, it does. Yes, yes. But Jake Verana, minus three. Yeah, that, that wasn't good. That can't be. That, that's got to mm. be That's got to be better. Uh, Dimitri Orlov minus one. That's got to be better. Yeah, I'm kind of. I kind of need to see more from him. Yeah, and I think I've I've gotten to the point with Orlov that I feel like it, he's like, you know, flat, just you know, going through the game, going and through the motion. Like, yeah, yeah. Does some like one amazing thing, and then we're back to being flat again. Yeah, and I I kind of feel like he started off this season sort of. Uh, I'm like. Like you, don't like you, can't quite get a feel. Then he had some great games. And I feel like we need to, he needs to get back to that. Yes, Verona needs to step up. Um, I'm, liking, I'm liking 65. I need him to stay consistent and keep going. Yeah, but he yeah, looks the, like, okay. his, Burkowski looks like he's starting to get his confidence back. And this, I think so this too. is a great time for that. Yeah. If he can keep that up and, and ride that into the playoffs, that that it, even if we get like la, like what was it last year or two years ago, I think it was last year where he had that great game when he was on that top line. Mm-hmm. If he can do that, say two or three times uh, in the playoffs, right? Yeah, uh, might might be able to do some damage. Well, and please tell me that you saw the the darts tournament between the team in new york i heard about it i didn't that ha- i want that hat so they all they all were wearing hats and it it's like a, a picture of uh of andre on it with a dart sticking out of his neck <laughs> God. and it 
and it is, you know, a spoof off of Will Ferrell and old school. <laughs> You know, like, and that's just is one of the best movies, and and that part is hilarious. So whoever came up with that was it was brilliant. And so the picture I saw was uh, was of Ovechkin and Brana, and they each had their hats on. And I thought, you know what? There's a good pair. Like, there's a good mentor towards my my number thirteen that I'm going to pull for. You know, someone that's going to maybe keep him a little grounded, and and then also get his confidence up because I thought he skate. I mean, he always skates quick and hard, but I felt like he was a little bit tougher on the ice the last couple of games, which is good. And and he's going to need that come playoff time because uh, oh, yeah. he's going to be he's going to be in certain situations where he's going to have to make room for himself uh, either with his quickness or if, if not with his quickness, then he's just going to have to gut it out. And yeah. that's been a problem for him in the past. So Right. You, but not as bad as I feel like other players. Like uh, I feel like there's other players that have been a little bit more timid on the, on the, you know, challenging, uh, you know, physically going after it with somebody else. I feel like uh, last couple of games, I've seen a little more um, toughness in him. And I think it's probably going to take, you know, that one game where he gets into a fight just to be like, all right, there, you know, there's your V card on fighting in an NHL game. Now move forward and keep going and we'll see. But I like I'm still I'm pulling for him. But that hat was awesome, and I'd love to get a hold of one. Um, post it on your uh, IG page, and, right. and then then link it to the uh, the Facebook page. Yeah. Just to give yeah. uh, everybody an idea, it might be a nice little uh, spring break <laughs> present. I don't know. <laughs> oh, a belated birthday present. Some, what? Something. Something yeah. like that. Um, can I jump in here and give some love to a guy? that we uh, we have not talked about a whole lot but i think in his own quiet way has been a difference maker since he was acquired uh about a month or so ago and oh. and that's michael kempney uh he has fit into the decor like a hand in a silk glove and he really i go he, what do you wear have you ever worn a silk glove actually yes why why, why not? Would, why, why not? Why, why would you ever be in a situation where you would need to wear a silk glove? I've dressed up before. I've With been told silk gloves. I've been told I clean up nice. Well, I I would be distracted with the silk gloves because I would be like, "What the hell are you wearing this?" <laughs> were they white? They were white, weren't they? Yeah. God. Anyways. Well, okay. So I did. I did theater for a while i not to reveal to myself okay just just stop fine we'll we'll stop any we've we've, yes we've talked about my list of things that yeah anyway kempney Kempney. has been (laughs) a a great fit for this team and i i don't know i don't know that he's going to be uh this all world difference maker that everybody's hoping for but um I think he's brought a little bit more stability mm-hmm. to the defense core. Now, unfortunately, pardon me. Unfortunately, it's come at the expense of playing time for both Madison Bowie and Christian Juice. Um, but uh, I think, and I think it was Craig Lachlan who said this. Don't worry about those two. They're young. They will get their playing time eventually. Mm-hmm. They are still developing. So. No need to worry. Yeah. No need to worry about them at all. Uh, I think Kempney's a keeper, though, and uh, I I don't know. I'd have to go to Cap Friendly and look up his contract status, but he's 27, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I I hope they at least keep him around for uh, a couple of years to act as a bridge because we got some good young D coming up, right? Uh, and and he will be and it, uh, who. Boy, uh, I'm hoping and praying, uh, but uh, Brooks Orpic will one day be on his way out. Right. Um, so uh, with him leaving and the kids needing some time, uh, hopefully he'll be some uh, something of a, a, a stable presence, I would think. Right. Uh, uh, to help the kids develop. And that, so that's why I, I kind of hope they keep him around. I think so, too. I've, I've actually... 
I've, I've actually been surprised at how much, how easily he came in and transitioned because like you said, uh, hand in a silk glove. No, that's not what I would say ever. All right. Never say that. Then what would you say? No, I'm just saying that he was able to join the team with a really great transition. It's got nothing to do with silk gloves. Um, it, but I feel like I'm, I'm glad that he came in and he is meshed well with, with the whole team and isn't standing out as the star player or whatever, because I don't think that's what the caps needed. I think they needed somebody who is at their level, who can play with, you know, different players and, and, you know, they've moved his, um, you know, his D line partner around a couple of times to see is, you know, Carlson or see this, you know, and he's been with Jaravac. I like it. I like him. I like, you know, the age thing works in his favor. And I agree. Bowie, adorable, absolutely adorable, but I need him to kind of, I don't know, toughen up a little bit. And juice to me, hasn't disappointed. I have a feeling we'll see more of him very soon. And I like Jaravac too. I mean, he scored on, on that um, Habs game. Yeah, he- heck of a shot he had. Right? So, so it's, it, it was a good call. I think we were all sort of like, who are these guys? But, uh, I mean, at least I'll speak for myself. I was like, okay, here we go. And um, so good call on, on, on giving some love to those guys. Yeah, well, it's, it's one of those little moves. Without you, the gloves. Right. You don't think, um, you keep going, we're going to drop the gloves. Oh, but see, I would have like boxing gloves and you would have white silk gloves. So I still think I might win. Okay, so you you would have those smelly things and I would uh, bring a little class to it. So that's the difference between you and I, apparently. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Okay, Uh, uh, folks, we're not really mad at each other. This is all in fun. Um. But uh, sorry to break the fourth wall there. Uh, but but yeah, no, it's 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 one of those little tweaks that management makes. You don't think it's going to pan out uh, great, but it it provides, like I keep saying, enough stability to what was you know uh, two good, two really good defensemen, one old one uh, who's past his prime and a bunch of young kids and it just right. wasn't working out and so you got these journeymen in here to kind of smooth things over and it's it's just uh yeah it's it's worked out fairly well I think and hopefully uh something else they can ride into the playoffs I hope so too and I and I think the age thing is going to work in their favor at this time going into the playoffs because if you've ever done a sport any kind of sport or any, I mean, really anything that you've trained for or practiced for or auditioned for or whatever it is, when it comes down to it, you know, that, that last, um, whether it's a game, a play, a, you know, a concert, whatever it is, you got to come forward and give it a hundred percent and feel comfortable, but you're going to have nerves like crazy and be ready to, you know, puke before you get on the ice kind of thing. Um, and I think that's where these the vet players are going to be able to come in and say, okay, listen, what you're going through is completely normal. You have a huge adrenaline rush. It is amazing. But chill the f*** down. Focus on your hockey. Focus on why you are on this team and why we are where we are supposed to be. And keep going that. You know, don't worry. You know, if our first game is away – you got to shut out those fans because they're going to do anything they can to screw you up. And that's your Holtby, Ovechkin, Backstrom players that are coming and help the, you know, my boy Brana <laughs> and, and other, you know, younger players that may not be used to uh, going. I mean, yes, they've been in big games in, in their past, but not not like this. So I think I think it's a good balance. So, yeah, they I think it was a good call to have those guys come. Yeah, absolutely, and it's 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 kind of interesting that um, Kempney chose to wear number six, which is the uh, number that um, one of my all-time favorites used to wear, Callie Johansson, who was never uh, renowned for lighting up the scoreboard, even with, with assists, which he tended to do sometimes, 
but for his, I mean, he was, I, I like to say this, and not many agree with me, but I, I think he was Nicholas Lidstrom before Nicholas Lidstrom came onto the scene. Mm-hmm. A, and and so I, I think Kempney can kind of provide that kind of presence um, with, with his play. So he's going to, I think you're right, he's going to prove to be a lot valuable in, in that sense. Um, mm-hmm. So I mentioned Callie Johansson. We're going to segue again here. Um, someone else who considers him uh, his favorite player, uh, Christian Levesque, um, right. is our man on the street, uh, sort of, uh, at least uh, with the True Caps fans. He happens to be, if, if uh, anyone has gone to the True Caps fans Facebook room, uh, might have noticed he's been posting some pictures uh, of, of uh, his trip to NYC. So he just happens to be there. Uh, yes. Made a trip to with the, his brother, I think. Right? Uh, Stephen, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, awesome. so they're so they're both so they're both there. They're going to take in the uh, the uh, Rangers game uh, in uh, Madison Square Garden tonight, seven thirty puck drop. Um, and so yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of great pictures uh, and uh, reports. And so uh, the uh, just just to get this out there. Uh, Come playoff time, that that kind of few days before the playoffs actually start, we're going to have him on here with us to do a special playoff preview show. Oh, good. To uh, to kind of you know get get kind of a state of the team um, a, as we are, what he thinks, um, how they're doing now, and what to look for, and things like that. Kind of get his take on everything. And and I think one of those one of those key games I think is going to be this game that he's at tonight. So he's going to get a first hand look at the team. So the information he's going to provide from that is going to be pretty valuable. Awesome. Um, okay, so the clock on the wall is starting to tell us we're running out of time. I uh, uh, Mrs. Blue Liner would kill me if I didn't start running some water. Uh, uh, so, I'm doing that right now. Sorry, uh, uh, I'm I'm distracted here. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, in all seriousness, uh, no. She would kill me if I did not at least mention uh, a key move that the Caps have recently made. Uh, and I kind of have to correct myself in a discussion with her because she pointed this out to me, and, and she was like, well, how the hell can they sign a guy and have him play uh, because it's after the trade deadline? And I, I kind of thought about it and was like, yeah, uh, he is a signing after the trade deadline. But uh, who I'm talking about is, is Shane Gersich. And, mm-hmm. and uh, he's the kid from uh, University of North Dakota. Uh, he's going to kick ass. U- UND, so that's, uh, yeah, um, Mrs. Blue Liners, uh, yeah. Uh, anybody from there, he, she she absolutely loves. Um, but, yeah, they, they signed him to an entry-level contract, and I thought, I kind of thought the same thing. Well, how, how is he eligible to play? Well, he is, because he's foregoing his last year of college, uh, right. And he's not he's not in junior, so he's he's eligible since he's in the college ranks. He's eligible to play right now. And is he actually? I haven't looked. Is he going to play tonight? Uh well, he's not in the lineup. He's probably not going to play tonight. They're still trying to figure out where where he's going to fit. He's a forward. Right. So, uh, and and so what I heard, I think. I, I thought I saw Tony Olcott suggest this in True Caps or in our room or somebody. Mm-hmm. Somebody, maybe it was Bernie Deal even, but somebody uh, suggested that he could be uh, at least for the next, you know, his first couple years, he could be the heir apparent to Jay Beagle. Uh, oh, Jay Beagle. Yeah, so it would be kind of sad to see him go. But if they decide not to, I'm pretty sure Beagle is a free agent this year. Uh, so if they decide not to re-sign him, um, then he would be he would probably be his replacement on the fourth line. Is okay. is where I'm thinking. But the the article I read said, well, yeah, right now it's hard to kind of slot him because uh, there's just so many talented forwards. So right now there's there's really no room for him, but it, I think he's going to uh, add extra depth uh, come playoff time. It would be nice to have him have him around. Right. Okay, that must have uh, – maybe I just misread what – because I read a little a little blurb about him. I mean, again, a kid. <laughs> but you're playing North Dakota, uh, UND. You've got skill for sure. Um, 
And so I think I don't know why. Maybe I maybe I read it as he was available to play tonight, but it doesn't mean that he's in the lineup. Maybe that's what it was. Right. No, he's he's on the roster for sure, and they're they're talking like they want to get him playoff uh, playing time very soon, as in not Hershey, but with the big club. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They want to they want to get him in now, but um, yeah, there there's just you know. There's a log jam as far as talented forward, so, uh, right. you know. Um, he yeah. could just, I mean, come on, he's a kid. He could step in for Ovechkin. What's the big deal? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a waiting game, but, yeah, I, I kind of can't wait to see uh, what, yeah. he can, what he can do because um, he's, he's got a mini highlight reel, and uh, he's got... Uh, oh, he's got skill. He's yeah. definitely got, he's got skill to burn. Yeah, awesome. I'd like to see him and Vrana together, for sure. Uh, and you know, can we just can we just give? I know it's getting like close to my. I need to feed the masses moment. They're uh, they're on their way in right now. Um, the six goals needed by Ovechkin in the next seven games. It can be done. I totally think it will be done. <clears throat> he can... I actually think I kind of think he might just go fifty one fifty two. And and just because he can, like when he hit 40 and everyone's like, oh, my God, that's amazing. He's like, yeah, but 50 is better. He is when he. Damn. So let's hope. Let's hope tonight, you know, against the Rangers and let's hope when they bring it back against the Rangers and then Carolina. I like to see him, you know, maybe get that. I don't know. Maybe maybe he won't get all six, but I think I definitely think it's it's not. If Out he, of reach for him, for if, sure. If he goes into the playoffs on a hot streak, that cannot hurt, for sure. Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that, that would be nice to see, but no, I'm, I'm not going to be disappointed if he doesn't hit 50. I won't even be disappointed if he doesn't win the Rocket Richard. But if he goes into the playoffs into a nice hot streak, yeah, that, that will certainly be nothing but good for this team. Exactly. Um, exactly. Oh, okay, so I think with that, we're going to wrap it up for another episode. Um, thanks to all our listeners from the Commonwealth of Virginia, District of Columbia, and the state of Maryland, and all around the globe for listening to Triple P once again. Uh, Anna, any final thoughts? No. Nope. At a loss. I'm, I'm... At a loss for words for once. I know. Like, what would I do if I ever lost my voice? Oh, it would just oh, be... oh uh, that reminds me. Uh, okay, oh. so once again, here we are. It is Monday. Yeah. Uh, once again. So uh, you know what that means, and that means Sports on the Hill Live. Oh, yes. And our uh, roving reporter, uh, you just heard her, uh, will be uh, <laughs> representing our show and Caps Hockey Fandom uh, yes. with Carol Porter the Third tonight on tonight's broadcast. Uh yep. Uh, 7 o'clock, they air live. Uh, they'll be starting off the show, as usual, with Caps Hockey Talk. Uh, so do please give us give that a listen. Uh, yes, yeah, Robbie's on a, a much-needed spring break. Uh, they'll call it like a, a baby moon, I think is what people call it, when you're expecting in a couple of months, and it's sort of like your last little vacation before um, your whole life changes. <laughs> So I think that's, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. So just be Carol and I for the, I don't know for how long, um, probably the first half, half hour or so. And hopefully it'll lead into, because um, the puck drops at 7. Is that right? 7.30. For the Rangers game? 7.30. Oh, 7.30. Okay, so maybe we won't be going into that. Um, but yeah, we'll be talking same stuff and live. And they have a, a phone number you can call in if you want to. And, uh, or on Facebook, you can, you know, just scroll down and, say things see if you were doing this and i'd be writing all those things to distract you because it's funny but i don't look at the facebook page mm -hmm. much, so it's not going to do you any good uh power play point podcast uh <laughs> facebook page already has a link uh posted kindly by mr porter the third uh yes. a, a preview for the show so uh, do please check that out and uh of course the live show on on facebook live um Okay, so, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. And uh, for me, I hope they uh, continue winning, even if it is ugly. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, 
We've already it's argued. A win's a win's a win. All so right. At this well, point. We, we've already argued the, that to death, but yeah. Uh, yes, a win is a win, but I, I want to see better because, yeah, because this team can be better, but, you know, peak, yeah. peaking, not eking. <laughs> Uh, you know what? You should you should sell that for you know the cherry blossoms or something. But I don't know if I'm if I'm thinking about it so much for hockey. But that's okay. You were quick to come up with a rhyme. Good for you. <laughs> no if, sarcasm if, in that. If, at if all. only if only my my teachers in real life in grade school were as encouraging as you are. <laughs> right. I know. I just keep it real with my students. I'm like, really, is this the best you can do? Um, Yes, cool. So we'll watch the game tonight. We'll touch base. You'll post this hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday, and we'll go from there. Excellent. Okay, so for Anna Knox, this is the Blue Line. Blue Li- yeah, I can't talk today. Uh, for for uh, Bella and Anna Knox, <laughs> right. this is the Blue Liner on Point signing off with a reminder that if it's nacho cheese, what the hell are you doing with it? Mm. Okay, so... <laughs> All right. Hallelujah and let's go caps. All right, go caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle. 